Periplantitis was described in detail in a review paper by Frank Schwartz, John Derks, Alberto Monge, and Homle Wang. It's a very comprehensive review paper that all should study in detail. The main features of periplantitis may be summarized as follows. Periplantitis is a plaque-associated pathological condition in the tissues around dental implants. It is characterized by inflammation in the perimplant mucosa and the subsequent progressive loss of supporting bone. In addition, periplantitis sites exhibit clinical signs of inflammation, bleeding on probing or separation, increased probing depths, and or even recession of the mucosal margin in addition to the radiographic bone loss compared to previous examinations. In the sites where we identify perimplantitis, the probing depth has been found to correlate with bone loss and should therefore be regarded as an indicator for the severity of the disease. Please also note that the rate of progression of bone loss may indeed vary between patients. Further characteristics on perimplantitis include the knowledge that perimplant mucositis precedes perimplantitis. There are data indicating that patients diagnosed with perimplant mucositis may develop perimplantitis especially in the absence of regular maintenance care. The onset of perimplantitis may occur early at follow-up, as indicated by radiographic data. Also, in the absence of treatment, perimplantitis seems to progress in a nonlinear and accelerating pattern. Another feature on the progression of perimplantitis is that it seems to be faster than that we have observed for periodontitis around teeth. And histologically, when you look at periodontitis lesions, they do extend apical of the pocket epithelium, and they contain large numbers and densities of plasma cells, macrophages, and neutrophils. In addition, periodontitis lesions are larger than those we observe at perimplant mucositis, but also at periodontitis lesions around teeth. Let us look at the role of plaque and biofilm in perimplantitis. There are two aspects to consider. The first one is to acknowledge the evidence from observational studies that patients exhibiting poor plaque control and not attending regular maintenance therapy, they indeed are at high risk of developing perimplantitis. The second part has many features in common with the evidence we have for teeth and periodontitis. Namely, studies on the treatment of perimplantitis reveal that anti-infective treatment strategies are indeed successful in decreasing soft tissue inflammation and in suppressing disease progression. In perimplantitis, we, also, we have also identified risk indicators. There is strong evidence that there is an increased risk of developing perimplantitis in patients who have a history of severe periodontitis, poor plaque control, and no regular maintenance care after implant therapy. Data identifying smoking or diabetes as potential risk indicators for perimplantitis are, however, inconclusive. On the same line, the role of peri-implant keratinized mucosa, occlusal overload, titanium particles, bone compression necrosis, overheating, micromotion or biocorrosion as potential risk indicators for perimplantitis still remains to be determined. 